So a credit model is simply a framework that allows you to evaluate the credit risk of an issuer. That primarily means estimating the risk that the issuer might default. There are many ways you can do this. Uh, you can evaluate a company's financial statements, and that means evaluating the, the company's capital structure. It could mean estimating future earnings or debt servicing costs as well. Alternatively, you can take a quantitative approach. Ultimately, the quality of the inputs and the underlying assumptions that the model is grounded in will determine the quality of the model. One very established way of doing this is to model a firm's balance sheet. And that means assuming um, that a default will occur when the, the value of the company's assets are not sufficient to cover the debt obligations of that issuer. The key is placing a future expected value on those assets, which isn't straightforward just by looking at a company's balance sheet um, because those don't reflect market values. So what a credit model like the one from Moody's Analytics does is model the probability that the future value of those assets will decline to a point where default occurs. One of the key inputs in determining uh, the market value of assets is a company's equity price. And from that, you can derive the expected market value of the assets and then determine the expected probability of default, which is also known as the expected default frequency. We think that a quantitative approach is actually a very smart way to approach the investment grade market. First, because it's forward looking by nature. Uh, it's not based on historical data. It's an estimate of future credit risk. Second, it's issuer and bond specific. It's more granular than, than a credit rating, and it takes the issuer's uh, capital structure into account, as well as the individual terms of the bond itself. And lastly, because it's driven by market-based data, it provides you with signals with a higher frequency that is needed in order to identify value opportunities in the marketplace as they arrive. So I mentioned probability of default, and, and that's really the key output, uh, because ultimately the risk of default is what drives credit risk, uh, and that's what you're trying to put a value on. Or in other words, um, to, to understand the risk that you as a creditor of the firm may not get paid back. From that expected default frequency, there are other useful metrics uh, that can be used to, to build a portfolio that's value and quality oriented. Uh, with upside potential. So first and most importantly, if you can accurately evaluate that credit risk of the bond driven by expected default frequency, you can put a price on that risk. In other words, given the embedded risk of the bond, you can quantify how much you need to cover that risk. For corporate bonds, that means how much spread is needed over the risk-free rate. Uh, and we refer to that modeled spread as the fair value spread. Ultimately, default risk is pretty low within the investment grade market, and your risk of actually experiencing a default is very low, or, and certainly has been historically. But what we're mostly concerned about is avoiding bonds that have an increasing level of default risk. You want to avoid those deteriorating credits, because as the marketplace begins to recognize that deterioration, you're going to see wider spreads and a negative price impact. So it's about identifying those and making sure you're getting paid for the risk you're taking. And related to that is another metric that can be useful for investment grade investors as well, and that's downgrade risk. Or in this case, we're talking specifically about the risk of a bond being downgraded from investment grade to high yield. Downgrade risk can be impactful for investment grade investors and especially for triple B uh, bond investors because of the distinction that exists between the investment grade market and the high yield market and the forced selling that can occur as the marketplace begins to anticipate a downgrade in the future. You can actually parse the expected default frequency data into a forward measure of credit risk and marry that with actual ratings data um, to determine the probability of, of a downgrade to high yield in the future. And that can be used as an additional early warning signal uh, within a portfolio of bonds to avoid the bonds with high downgrade risk. So there are two primary ways that the Moody's Analytics credit model is being used by these strategies. First is to select the most attractively valued bonds, and that means comparing the market spread to the fair value spread. If you have a high market spread uh, relative to fair value, that means you're getting rewarded more for holding that bond uh, versus what the model says you need. In other words, you're buying undervalued bonds, and that represents upside potential. 
Another consequence is that you're avoiding bonds that are overpriced. So those would be bonds where the spread that you're getting in the market is not sufficient to compensate you for the risk that you're actually taking. Now, interestingly, we found that there's a huge dispersion in the investment grade market and, and the triple B segment as well um, in terms of pricing. You'll see bonds that have very different levels of risk and very different levels of pricing, even if they have the same credit rating, the same duration and the same amount of uh, bonds outstanding. Um, so the Moody's analytics data allows us to select only the bonds that have the most attractive valuations um, relative to their expected default frequency. The second screen is that early warning I mentioned related to downgrade risk. So after selecting the bonds with the most attractive valuations, our strategies also remove bonds that exhibit an excessively high level of downgrade risk. We want to avoid the potential of holding a bond that gets downgraded to high yield in the future so that we can uh, avoid the negative price impact that we often see with those types of bonds. Um, so even if the absolute level of default risk is low, we want to avoid those bonds that, that could be downgraded. The result is a portfolio of attractively valued bonds uh, with controlled risk and upside potential. So Moody's Analytics is the industry leader in credit risk modeling. Uh, their experience goes back several decades and they've drawn on that experience as well as an unrivaled data set of global default and recovery data and also a team of 30 researchers who are dedicated to credit risk modeling. And that's why we're excited to partner with Moody's Analytics on these two new ETFs, uh, which follow a rules-based investment strategy that's driven by the same process and same platform that over 650 of the largest institutions globally rely on for their credit risk management decisions.